Jesus is King. Welcome to Off the Record, the Tim and Jerry show yeah. featuring Tim and Jerry. Taylor Crad, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Fantastic. I've been doing good. I've been keeping busy. I, uh, I'm, I'm putting pictures into the documents that I sent to you so that each chapter has uh, a photo that will go with it. Um, originally, I wanted to have it so that like photos of real photos of y'all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, dude, that that way, so because awesome. it's so surreal, people people are gonna wonder if it's real. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be yeah, like, "Dude, is this serious?" To have a photo for those, right? Yeah, like I, I just I just finished yesterday. I just wrapped up editing the chapter on uh, when we went back to the very birthplace, right where Sammy was conceived. We went wow. back to where my wife and I we we lived when we first got married. We got married there, and uh, it was a mansion. We we had a we had a. Uh, an apartment inside of a mansion. It was like three stories tall, had huge pillars in the front and stuff. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was a, a sabbatical for writers and artists and composers and stuff like that. So uh, we're in there and uh, and I'm talking about this massive house and these huge pillars. And I can imagine people being like, dude, is this place even real? <laughs> so I, I have a picture of our family there with these massive pillars. It's a cool picture. And that's going to be at the beginning of it. So every single one of them places the story where it is, right? And so, and it's just one picture for now. Eventually, in different editions of the book, I'd like to have sections like glossy pages in the book that are little stories, vignettes of different pictures and stuff like that. But I've been keeping busy, well, homie. We might have We're, to. We have to yeah. figure some. I, I don't know how to do that yet. Printing that, so we'll we'll have to yeah. figure that out. But I'm yeah. planning to finish. So. Announcement for everybody. I'm planning to finish everything for Roman Catechism Explained to get that printed, God willing, next week. But I, I think that um, we might have to wait for some promotion. So w w I think we'll we'll definitely have that printed and available by the first Sunday of Advent. But then I can start working on your book like next week, God willing, at the earliest. Yeah. Well, that's um, per that, that works perfectly. And Angela's so, in here. Angela's yeah, in here. Up, she, she can tell you. Yeah, and, and shout out to the test, if there's any wolf pack. I, I sent the link to the wolf pack. Yeah. Um, so if anybody wants to. So this is the Tim and Jerry show. If you haven't, if you're yeah. new, the Tim and Jerry show is called Off the Record, is where we talk about all the most controversial topics that we can't talk about publicly. Uh yeah. today we'll talk about American politics, which is Pilocrat's uh wheelhouse, which was for decades. Uh, as he in his in his professional life as a as a political journalist as a politician as a as a uh, aide to politicians and politics he's been in politics for many years both as a journalist and and as really doing politics itself um, <clears throat> and uh, what we'll do is we'll just release the first five ten minutes of this publicly to promote the show um, rest of it will be only for guild members or wolf pack members uh, so be sure to support. The meaning of catholic or paleocrat diaries yeah. um so let me just start off with one guild question here for you jeremiah yeah which is um entire screen this is what i want yeah okay okay um steven he's our business admin at meaning of catholic shout out to steven he says jerry who do you trust enough in national federal politics to point at as a person group that we need to rally around and elevate understanding that the state and local levels are the most important who should we hedge bets on to help us at the federal level both now and come 2024 well um you know obviously i'm a fan of uh the governor there in florida right happy to see him uh DeSantis. and uh, but also donald trump and let me let me say something about this is that um, I don't have a, a tremendous amount of faith at the federal level, for example, right? I think that my my model of civilizations and civilizational decline is that we are like well beyond the breaking point. Like we are in, in the history of civilizations, you know, Camille Paglia, for all of her very messed up beliefs about things, she's actually really accurate about this. And that is that, and she's, she's somebody to talk about this because she's, herself very sexually disordered, but that when you see the rise of the trannies, right? When that happens in any civilization at all, when you see that emerge and take hold at a political level, uh, that uh, that paradigm, um, you're witnessing the death throes, 
because your 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 culture is so messed up that it doesn't even know anymore what a man or a woman is. And if you don't know what a man or a woman is, you know, the idea of a fatherhood, motherhood, parent parenting at all, right? Um, various gender roles, the ideas about hierarchy, marriage, all of these things, courting. So many things are wrapped up in that. The domestic life is the core of your of your culture. So if that thing's toast, right, and you can't even figure that out, you're in big trouble. So we're already there. Like we're like, <laughs> yeah, that, we're like, <clears throat> that's yeah. the according to Catholic social teaching, the family is the the social, the irreducible social unit of all of society and civilization. Yeah. So we've yeah. got the civilization breakdown. I totally agree with your what you're saying. So how does that? Yeah. What does that so, do with Trump? You have no faith in the well, little yeah. faith of the, at the federal level. What are your thoughts on Trump? Well, the and the reason why the reason why I bring up Trump and why I connect with that is because um, we are at a place where the idea that we're going to have a bunch of very and maybe this is a little bit lollipop land anyway, that, that we're going to have these like really devout people that are going to rise up and, and be running at the federal level. At this point, it's extremely difficult for that to happen. And most of the moves that are made and that would be required, in fact, to be made at a federal level are power moves. And that's a, a terrible thing to have to say, right? That, that you say at this point where we're well into the the era of we're, we're past economic man, right? So we're not <laughs> we're no longer so interested in that. We're even beyond culture, man, like or anti culture man or anything like that. We're now in the world of just power politics, which is why you see the rise of the the angry mobs, the fermenting lunatics right out there. And why even on the right, you'll have people who on, on the one hand oppose big government. And yet on the other hand, would have very much enjoyed to see God Emperor Trump, right? This is the meme God Emperor Trump, this idea that he's going to come in and be this kind of gray man that's going to, you know, come in and, and crush everything and take down the deep state and be a very strong central figure, right? So I'm, I'm of that persuasion and that in this time that the kind of person that is going to be required to perform such a task has to be of such a disposition and a demeanor that they're going to be able to withstand the most brutal things in the universe to be loathed more than anybody to be hated and that they can wake up and somehow continue right somehow not not completely fall apart every day when when everything you know the the deep state and everybody else is throwing the, everything in the kitchen sink at them, that takes a certain kind of person. So you may have a very a, a person who is an otherwise decent guy or an otherwise decent woman, um, but they get to that place and they may lack certain qualities that allow them. They may, it, you know it's easy maybe for them to feel disheartened, um, wanting to wanting to fit in a little more, wanting to impress, wanting to uh you know succeed or whatever instead of saying oh no this is actually what i believe and i kind of don't care what you think <laughs> and so in that regard i think donald trump fit the bill um so when it comes to national politics i'd say stick with your guns with whatever whatever institution you support because people have all different values some people it might be second amendment a lot of people especially watching this channel it would be things to do with marriage family and abortion and so that would be, you know, find your your groups on a national level that are that are advocating those because that's your middle. That's your your monkey in the middle. That's the person who's going to be able to go and and lobby effectively. And we can complain about lobbyists, but that's ultimately what we're talking about here is saying somebody who is going as a group that you can identify with something bigger than yourself to be able to go and address institutions that are really far away from home with people with way more money than you have to offer and maybe no interest in folks like you, to be quite frank, and to them, money and power talk. Well, if you're part of a very big group, you are now part of power. If you're part of that power, you also probably have money, right? The group does. And so to support groups that you believe in at a federal level that you think most closely align with your values as a Roman Catholic and to advocate with them, to push them, to hold them accountable, it's closer than than uh, uh, an elective official, and so you would be able. And to them, money matters, right? I mean, that's like that's their bread and butter. So, so you pushing and pressuring that group and getting involved, it's easier for you. It's more immediate for you. 
and it connects you more immediately to institutions and to individuals that would otherwise be really dismal. So uh, we should get, let me get back to Trump and DeSantis. Um, it, it, first of all, is DeSantis for sure running in 2024? Has he announced that? Uh, I think that he's positioned himself in such a way. Okay. And he has to because it's one of these things where you don't really know. I mean, Trump's kind of wild. He has to get reelected for, for the midterms, though, next next week. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, so but if he, either way, either way that goes, I don't think it's going to affect him too badly if he chooses okay. to to run, right? So, um, yeah. Okay. Look, I, there's a really good question in the chat. First of all, shout out to uh, Daniel. He, I'm wearing my uh, off-the-record uniform here because there's a big rivalry game this Saturday. But uh, yeah, I, I have, unfortunately, Michigan State has <clears throat> had a terrible season. So I do have hope that the, the Bucks will t be taken down by the U of M later this uh, fall. But we'll see about that. Danielle, or Daniel, sorry. <laughs> Danielle, you yeah, Danielle, Danielle, Danielle you're in trouble. This is the off the record yeah. show. We just, we just fly by the seat of our pants here. Daniel has a really great question. I really like this question. Um, how does the need for obedience differ between what we owe our political superiors versus what we owe our ecclesiastical superiors. And this is the one of the things that is un, kind of un, quite unfortunate, I think, about democratic society is that you just said there's this, this power politics and there's all this just mudslinging. Uh, you kind of, in order to be elected, you basically have to uh, tell everybody how great you are and tell people how the other guy is not so good. Um, and as, as citizens, we're constant, constantly having to complain, but we still owe a, a piety, a form of piety to our political superiors, even uh, yeah. even the bad ones. What are your thoughts on that, Jeremiah? Well, this is actually, people may not know this, but this is actually one of those areas where Tim and I, we, ha we have shades and degrees of difference, maybe. Um, I put a lot of emphasis, a lot, on Leo the Thirteenth, And when we talk about, uh, and... Uh, uh, Pope St. Gregory the Great, okay? When we talk about obedience to, to our um, e ecclesiastical authorities, w my contention, what makes mine a little different, I, and I only say that is to qualify, right? To say there's a little bit of a difference. Um, that Leo the Thirteenth in an encyclical on Christian citizenship addresses this question. And he talks specifically more in that encyclical when he says prelates, he's really talking political. He's, he's, he's talking more. He's, in fact, that's what he's specifically addressing because he says that we need, we ought to take a cue from the political wisdom of ecclesiastical authority. So he says there is a dynamic to ecclesiastical authority that's political, right? That's the first thing he says, but we should take, we should take the wisdom from that, the practical wisdom from that, from that and to apply it to prelates. Now, that's a big thing, because if you go back and you read what he's citing, and you read that text, what it talks about is uh, King David and King Saul. And it's so fitting that he does this, because uh, St. Gregory the Great, what, what he does in that is he's applying a story that ultimately is uh, political leaders, and he's applying it to how subjects should treat their bishops. So he's talking everyday folks. What do you do if a bishop does something crazy bad? That's the section it's in. But yet the story he's using is political. And that's Saul and King David. Yeah. Whereas Leo the 13th uses that religious section and, and reemphasizes the political dynamic. And the answer to that would be respectfully. Yeah. That we ought to respect them. And in some ways even treat them in people may not like this, um, that there's a sense almost of fathers that there's, uh, there's a, an admiration, there's an honor that goes with that. And even when you disapprove, to be very careful about how you disapprove, because it's a terrible disorder, uh, terrible social illness uh, to lash out constantly at your leaders. Yes. I, I mean, we quite agree on, on the basic principles uh, of all these things, the importance of respect, the, the danger of the poisonous impiety, both to ecclesiastical and leaders and political leaders. Uh, Daniel says, Seems like the same forces at work in government, big business, international organizations at work in the church, but probably shouldn't be skeptical of everything the Pope and members of the magisterium do. I think that's a great comment. I think that th this brings us to St. Augustine's great work, City of God, where he talks about this, the mystery of iniquity that's going, that happens in, within the church and without the church. 
because the city of God and the city of man are, are sometimes it's not clear who's in the city of God and who's in the city of man. And so this is the mystery of iniquity, but through the eyes of faith, we can have faith that God will always guide his church. And even he will still establish the, um, you know, the institutions of the state, which, because that's a part of his institution as well for society. I now, think we'll, oh, go ahead. I'll just say this quick. So like, um, one thing that is different, because I see this sometimes you'll see, you know, people, especially the more libertarian faction and stuff that will make that comparison with this, with the state and with the church. There's a good point to this, that the state actually is the bearer is, is a minister. The state actually has a symbol that it represents, and that's the sword, right? Primarily, yeah. it's primary function, sword. Whereas the church primary function is keys, right? Doesn't mean that there's not an interplay, a kind of, if I can steal the phrase without entirely taking everything, a symphonia, right? There's a, there's a certain kind of balance of these things, the way they harmonize together. There's not disorder here. Um, but there is a difference between them. And that's why the church emphasizes that it is not the state. And that is that, um, and that it's to guide the state as mother and teacher. And that's because the church is divinely constituted. And it deals with specifically with divine revelation. So it's a matter of just <laughs> lots and lots of authority. Now, the government is too, but now you're talking a lot of, I mean, you're really boiling down a lot to natural natural law, um, things to do with our reason, right? And so in that regard, uh, there would be a difference. And one of them is assured that its verdict would be infallible. There is no such assurance for, let's say, the Supreme Court. Right? Yeah, good, good. yeah, there's no good, That's a good yeah basic conspicuous distinction for sure yeah uh, let me just i'm going to read this question then we'll end the public portion of this uh perhaps this is this good is a though. can of worms yeah. y'all would rather not open says nicholas but what do you think about election fraud in the last election did it happen if it did what's the point in voting if it'll be manipulated 